Hello, I'm John Stapleton with Code VA, and this is a quick tutorial on adding audio to your Twine stories. Um, I have a little passage set up here. I am going to add audio. Um, this story is about a storm, uh, and you can see I have a title page, and then I have this empty uh, passage, and this passage will be where my sound uh, starts. The first thing you need in order to add sound to your Twine stories is an audio file. Now, um, there are lots of ways to get audio files. You can record audio yourself using your phone or a microphone or whatever else. Um, you can also find audio online on, on you know, there, there's sites where you can like get sound effects and stuff uh, like royalty free sound effects. Uh, if you check the link in the description, there's a text version of this tutorial, and there are some links to some options in that on that page. So check that out if you're looking for some options, if you're not sure where to find audio files. But um, once you have your audio files, there's sort of a second hurdle to overcome, and that's actually getting Twine to be able to read your audio files so that it can play the audio in your story. Um, if you're using the offline Twine editor, that's not as big of a problem. You can just use that audio file as like a file on your computer. But if you're look if you're interested in publishing your story or if you're using the web-based Twine editor like I am here, um, then it's a little bit more complicated. You can't just use a straight up audio file. You have to upload that file somewhere uh, and then link to that file from within your story. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that with Google Drive. Uh, I've got a Google Drive folder here, and I've got some audio files that I want to uh, that I want to use. So um, you should be able to hear. These files, I'll, I'll just kind of play this one. Uh, it's called Rain. Uh, and it'll load up. You should be able to hear. Yeah, it's pretty quiet, but you can <laughs> you can potentially hear um, some rain in the background. Right, maybe I'll turn that up just a little bit. Yeah, here we go. You can hear hear some rain happening in the background. Um, now, to add this to my story, I need to change the file permissions in Google Drive. So I'm going to go over to share and the share menu is going to pop up. I'm going to select anyone with the link and then I'll make sure this says view. And then I'm going to hit copy link so I can grab the link to the file. Um, so that's step one. Then I'm going to head back over to Twine and I need to add this file information to the Twine, um, to the Twine passage. I need to add some code. I'm going to paste this uh, file URL here. Really the important part is this string of seemingly random letters and numbers after d slash. This is called the file ID, and every file in Google Drive has an, a unique ID like this. Um, so I'm going to use that. Now, to add the sound, first I'm going to type sound.ambient. And then I need to pick a name. The name can be anything I want. Uh, I'll call it rain, because that's what this audio sounds like. That seems like a good name then dot URL, and then a colon. It's really important that this is all exactly the same. The only part that you can make up is this word here. Um, then after URL, I'm going to put a uh, quotation mark, HTTPS colon slash slash drive.google.com slash UC question mark ID equals, and then this file ID. And then I can close the quotation marks. Uh, after the URL, you're also going to add a description. So same deal, sound.ambient.rain.description. And then in quotation marks, just a, like a one sentence description. And then finally, after all that, you're going to put a uh, two dashes. And now I can delete this. So that is the uh, like code to have Twine load a audio file into the story. And then after that, I can add uh, whatever I want to the passage. Uh, if I test this, you'll notice that Twine doesn't show that code before the that, that I've written before the two dashes. Uh, this part is happening like invisibly in the background, uh, which is good because it doesn't look like good story text. <laughs> so, um, so that's nice. Um, now my uh, story isn't playing any uh, any rain sounds right now. So I need to add one more line of code to make that work. Uh, the line of code starts with a curly bracket and then the word ambient. Uh, and then the word sound with a colon. And then in quotation marks after sound, I'll put the name of the 
file that I've loaded up. Um, so I've given this file the name rain, uh, and I'll put rain there. So this name has to match that word I've chosen. Okay, so that is that. Now, if I t test this directly, it's not going to play correctly. Um, you, you can't have a file just start playing sound uh, by itself. So uh, I have to start at the beginning, and then uh, after I click begin, the rain sounds will start. Yeah, got some rain going. That's nice. Uh, very good. Um, that is how ambient sound works. Uh, ambient sound is a kind of like fades in slowly and then it kind of like will go on in the background. Um, you can also do other kinds of sounds. First, I'll show you how to trade out another sound. Um, so I have another audio file here, Storm. It's already shared properly. Uh, so I'm, let me copy that link here. And all I have to do to make this new file work is I have to copy the file ID. So I'll grab that and put it in the URL. Um, then I have to give it a new name. So we'll call this one Storm and give it an accurate description. Now I can delete that section. And then instead of saying rain, I'll say storm because that's the word I've chosen. And we'll get a different sound. Oh, I messed something up. Maybe I didn't get the whole file ID. Let me just double check it. Oh yeah, I didn't get nearly the whole file ID. <laughs> Let me grab all of it. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky. You kind of have to make sure you get everything uh, situated. It's, it's an, not exactly intuitive. Um, all right, let's try that again. Test, begin. Yeah. Oh, that was a lot louder. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, there we go. And it's not really gentle rain. This is more of a storm, so I should change out my words. Okay, so that's ambient sounds. Ambient sounds fade in. They're kind of gentle in the background. They're supposed to be a little bit quieter. You can also do uh, sound effects, which is um, a sound that plays once right when the passage starts. Now, to, to do sound effects, it's a slightly different process. Uh, or rather, it's... It's largely the same. <laughs> so I have a sound effect. This is just like a one thunder crash. Go to share, make sure it's shared appropriately. Anyone with the link can view and I'll copy the link. And I'm gonna come in here um, and I just change a couple things. So first I need to get this file ID. Let's grab that. Uh, and then delete the old file ID. You can have multiple uh, sound effects if you want to. I'm just using one at a time for the sake of um, for the sake of demonstration. Uh, and then over here, we're gonna instead of saying ambient, you're gonna say effect, and then we'll give it a name. We'll call this one boom. Same thing here, effect, boom, uh, and then here uh, the the notation is slightly different. You do effect sound, and then the word boom. I'll, I'll change this out so it's more more thematic. Oh, I think I've mixed up my syntax. It actually goes sound effect boom. Yeah, there we go. That's sound effects. Now you notice it, it doesn't really fade in or out. It just goes and then does its thing, uh, which is pretty good. That's kind of what we want. So uh, that's sound effects and ambient sound with Twine. A little complicated, a couple of steps. Uh, you know, if you have trouble getting this set up for yourself, uh, we would love to hear from you. We'd love to help. Get in the comments of this video. We can uh, provide some advice or help you troubleshoot. Um, if you want to see a text version of this tutorial with uh, examples and, and example code to copy and paste and all the different stuff. If you want to try out my audio file IDs, uh, go to the link in the description. There is a text-based version of this tutorial on the Twine Trail Guide. Um, you can find a ton of information there along with other resources for other topics. Uh, and with that, I think that's everything. Good luck and happy coding.